Welcome in, everybody. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. And welcome to another episode of Spiritual Philosophy Chatter with the Joneses. I'm Danny Jones. And I am Samantha Jones. All right. Here we are. Episode 34. 34. And what is the topic? This is perception versus reality. Cool. Yeah. This will be a trippy one. This one, it you know, I, I talk often about how these things come to me. And this week was hard for me. Like, I wasn't getting anything intuitively about what to do. Yeah. So I presented to you that we do the episode on religion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and because we've been thinking about that for a while. And it didn't sit right with you. And you know what? I was like, no, I feel like I'm pushing it. And then this came to me. And then we had a very deep religion discussion. And now I know why we're doing this first. Right. It's really cool how, how the other side does this, how they help to put things in line. Because honestly, I feel like when we do that, perception is something that we needed to talk about first. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, before we hop into it, got anything from last week? I do. I have something to read. Uh, there's this very sweet lady, Su Suzanne, that I do readings for sometimes. Mm-hmm. And uh, after last week's episode, which was So You Want to Talk to the Animals, she sent me this. She said, thank you, thank you, thank you for this episode. You have no idea how much your suggestions have helped me. I feel like I'm communicating better with my own pets now. I for sure haven't gotten to the point where I, I am completely confident in what I'm getting from them, but they for sure hear me when I try to communicate with them. Some of the behaviors have already changed. It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And it's I, a couple of things about this. Thank you, Suzanne, for that, by the way. And I'm so glad that, that that's helping you so far. Um, you, uh, from the beginning, noticed that you could communicate with the dogs. They could hear you. Even though you couldn't hear them back, You could. they could hear you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we forgot to point out last week, too, <clears throat> is that that is the case. They Even if you can't hear them back, if you talk to them correctly, they can hear you and you can fix issues that way. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I can't hear them back. <clears throat> I think sometimes you sometimes do. Sometimes I, I do and it's like I don't, I wonder, but you know, it's it's still a learning process. It is, but yeah. But yes, I definitely know that and just based on their actions and things I can get them to do that they can hear me when I'm talking to them telepathically. Yes, it's a much easier skill than we realize. It's definitely easier to do than to receive it. But if you start to believe in, you know, that you're doing it, there's no reason why you can't receive it, too. True. Yeah. Very true. Again, perception, what we're going to talk about. <laughs> yes, this is true. Yeah. Well, that was cool. Who, yeah. What was her name? Suzanne. Again? Suzanne. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that, for sure. Very cool. So, yeah, that's what I have for last week. Awesome. All right. Well, then episode 34. Yeah, let's do it. Perception versus reality. So first, let's start with what are the definitions of these two things? Because they are very different. And I didn't even really realize that a lot of people think that their perception is reality. And that's why we have to talk about what both things are. <laughs> it can get very convoluted. It does. I, it was This was a complicated episode for me to put together. I procrastinated and pretty much waited till the very last second. Although we didn't record when I thought it was going to be the last second. So, <laughs> right. but yeah, I, it was difficult because um, it is very confusing. And so I'm going to try and simplify it as much as possible because a lot of the, like the stuff that you find on the internet, just like most subjects is very conflicting. The ones that they talk about this in regards to spirituality were so far over my head that I was like, how I can't even talk about this stuff because I can't even read it without going, what <laughs> are we talking about? Right. So anyways, back to the definitions. Okay. Perception is the way of regarding, understanding, or interpreting something, a mental impression. Mm -hmm. Reality is the world or the state of things as they actually exist, mm -hmm. existence that is not subject to human decisions. So there's clearly, right off the bat, there's clearly two different 
definitions there. And what do I have right on the top of this page? Two very different things. Yes. That's like the main thing that I Two wrote there. Two very different things. Totally different things. Um, something else I put here about perception is perception occurs entirely in your mind. Mm -hmm. Reality exists completely outside of the mind and can't be easily manipulated. True. Right. Now, and not one discounts the other. No. No, absolutely so, not. To say that you perceive something in a certain way is not to discount reality, nor to say that's not how it is. This is reality is not to discount perception. Absolutely. We were talking about this a little bit earlier today when we were trying to figure out what to title this, because what was your original, what you thought it was? How your perception affects reality or something yeah, like that? Or affects your reality. Right. And that's very specific and mm -hmm. that's very correct. Your perception does affect your reality, mm -hmm. but your perception does not affect somebody else's reality. Yeah, there's millions of other perceptions. Exactly. Going on. This is a very hard thing for people to wrap their head around. One reality, millions of perceptions. Yes, absolutely. It's hard, I think, sometimes for us to step out of ourselves and see things from through other people's eyes because we don't realize that their perception of what's taking place or what has taken place could be completely different from ours. This is something that I have worked on a lot and that you've worked on and sometimes you struggle with. And I try to remind you that oh, yeah. just because you maybe feel something or you see something one way does not mean that the person on the other end of it right. does. Yeah, it, it's and I that is why this had to come before religion, because it's the same thing. It's right. like we can all maybe see the reality in it, mm -hmm. but the way that we perceive that reality yeah. is completely. Well, different. that's where the old saying comes from. There's two sides to every story. Yes. There's two perceptions to every reality. Yes. You know, in a situation. So. Right. Meaning if it's in disagreement or whatever, you know. Right. <laughs> and you look at the there's two sides <clears throat> to every story. And let's go a little bit deeper on that. You have, like, let's say that you and I have different sides of a story. Mm -hmm. You have my perception and your perception, and they're different. Because things stick out to you. Like, let's say we're talking about an argument. Things stick out to you in that argument that may not stick out to me. Right. And vice versa. Right. So even though the reality of what happened is the same, the way we look at it is completely different. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a trip. That and overflows in everything. Absolutely. That's a, into all yes. at facets of life. Yes, really. it does. And I think that's why we're so different, mm -hmm. why people are so different and why it's so hard. Like I get frustrated now sometimes and, and I try and not, but especially with doing these readings on shine, it, I get frustrated because it's hard to explain my perception of things. And mm -hmm. it's hard sometimes to understand how something can be perceived one mm -hmm. way Yep. by one person and another way by me. Right. But when you're in the middle of a situation, like let's say, like I do a lot of love readings on Shine, a lot, okay? And somebody comes to me and they say, I can't live without this person. I, I have no purpose. And I did have somebody say that to me. I have no purpose without this person in my life. That's a bummer. That is your perception. Yeah, that's a bummer. That's a bummer perception. It is. And you know what? It's not unusual because right. like these types of things, breakups, that's a form of grief. And if you're in grief, whatever it is, I'm really not talking about you. Grief mm -hmm. is a completely different thing. When you're in grief, your perception is completely wrapped up. Mm -hmm. So that's where with this girl, instead of being like, no, you're, you know, that you're wrong. I try to talk her down a little bit, right. you know, uh, yeah, that you're looking at it that way. Now that's grief. That's breakup. But later on down the road, you're going to see yeah. from a different angle that that person was not the person for you. Right. But again, it's totally your perception. And a bigger picture of that or perception of that is that we typically aren't born together or die together. It's an individual journey. Yes. So you're meant to, um, you're meant to meet people in your life. Um, yes. You might have several soulmates, people that you could potentially be very connected with and have a happy life with. Yes. I, the reason why I believe that there's several is because what if something happens to one of them? Right. You know, it's, it's all about, again, 
can you connect, you know, what your perception of that situation is too. But yes. I thought a good example in my head when you were saying that about this person was like, take, for example, um, five people in a room that are outgoing and a shy person walks in. Mm-hmm. The By the end of the evening, the perception could be very that if it didn't go well, the perception of the shy person is, why didn't they like me? Yes. Yet the perception of the five other people is, why is she so stuck up or like yes. won't talk to anybody? Again, right. you don't really know what it's like to walk in anybody else's shoes. Yes. And I have to be reminded of that by myself and others a lot. It's a, it, and you know, you brought that up for a reason. <laughs> so you you go, but this is again, perception. Yes. The reality of the whole situation is, guess what? There were six people in a room. Mm-hmm. That's it. Right. That's exactly right. And what those six people take from each other in that room is completely different. Each person in there perceives each person completely different and may pick up on different things and stuff. I am very shy. And this is something that I struggle with. Um, I usually feed off of other people's energy. Right. If they're upbeat and positive and they involve me, then I'm great. I don't have a problem at all. But if I come in contact with somebody that's just as shy as me, I have a really hard time, you right. know. But that's my perception of it. And, like, maybe the other shy person, we're both like, oh, maybe she just doesn't like me, you know. And that's not the case at all. Right. So, yeah, you're kind of, you know. Again, we don't know what it's like to walk in each other's shoes. No. And perception is just one aspect, you know, of um, of our being. Yes. So is it always accurate? Well, it's not, you're not quoting reality. So it's not necessarily meant to be accurate. Right. It's an individual perception. Right. Exactly. And so a couple of things that I put, because I thought there's other great examples for this, but um, I took this, a lot of what I'm saying here from an article uh, that I got online. Oh, gosh, I know I wrote his name down. I don't know where I put it now, but uh, it's from Psychology Today and I will find it. And so what I'm telling you isn't really even so much just through my eyes, it's what I did get off of different sites and stuff about how people look at this. So we're giving, you know, opinion and and fact here. Um, This one says, uh, the lens through which we are perceived is often warped by influence like previous experience, emotion, religion, beliefs, and traditions. So, for example here, I, I have always struggled with my weight. And most women have an issue with their weight. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is something that we're now dealing with a little bit with our daughter is, is the weight and the way that boys treat them and the way that that changes a girl's perception of what beautiful is. And that's like pre-exposure, like exposure to it previously. Yes. Sets that perception. That's standard. Yeah, that's exactly right. But the thing is here that, the perception of what is beautiful Mm -hmm. is it is different in everybody's mind. Mm -hmm. So what society is teaching us girls, because it's, it's something that's implanted in us Mm -hmm. by society. What that's teaching us is that we are supposed to look a certain way and that all men want us to look this way. And that's not the case at all. And I think that because we're taught that we're, we're not, often looking for the right man. Like if you're trying to look a certain way for a man, Mm -hmm. that's your perception of what you look like. But his perception could be entirely different. Mm -hmm. We were watching botched last night. This is a great example. And there was this girl that had so much plastic surgery. If you've never seen that show, it's about two doctors in Beverly Hills that uh, they fix other uh, plastic surgeons mistakes basically. Yeah. And we only caught like the very tail end of it. But what we caught was this woman that had had so much plastic surgery and she wanted to continue to have more because she felt that that was the only way that she was going to get a man. She even said it to the doctor, like he suggested cause she wanted more like Brazilian butt lift or whatever. And he said, no, he's the, the it's not going to work. It's going to end up horrible, right. you know? And 
don't do it. And she wasn't listening. And she said that if he could find her a man that was okay with the butt that she had, that she wouldn't have surgery. And it's like, are you serious? You're going to choose a man by if he likes the size of your butt? <laughs> that is that is her distorted perception of herself. And right. that's what society, unfortunately, has done to women. And my my point is, is that no matter how you look at yourself, no matter what you think is fat or beautiful, there is somebody that is supposed to be with you that will love you exactly the way you are, yeah. no matter what your size is, no yeah. matter. I mean, I have fluctuated in weight since we've been together up and down. I do that. You mm -hmm. know, we both do. It's just a part of life. It's happens. not. Yeah. You don't choose a partner by what they look like. You <clears throat> I'm know, not looking for perfection. I don't. I don't no. think you are either. No, it, it's not about that. It's I, I mean, some people are more attracted to the physical. But the thing is, is as you get older, again, your perception chart starts to change. Looks start to decrease. I mean, that's another thing I'm dealing with right, right. now that I'm having my own self-conscious issues with is that I'm getting older and there's elasticity issues happening here. <laughs> and when I talk to you about it and I tell you how I'm feeling, you tell me it doesn't matter. Right. And you it know doesn't. why it doesn't matter? Because... It's not that like it's not Your about perceptions that. as you get older it changes too. And, and you realize it's, it's not just, it's not that, it, no. I mean, there's a part of, you know, physical attraction with any, yeah, you have to have that couple to begin with, but, um, your perception changes is for me, I'll say it's changed in the sense of like, I realize it's more based on, um, the connection, the, yes. the mental, the, the spiritual connection, the soul connection, yes. and the experiences that you yes. that you share together, the things you get to do and see. Yeah. Um, because let's face it, doing a lot of fun things alone isn't really as much fun as it is doing, I think, with right. somebody you love. Exactly. And sharing those experiences. And again, right. like your perception of an experience will be different than mine. And then the things that I right. remember that stuck out to me trigger and you you know what i mean it's like it yeah. brings up those things but as you get older your your perception definitely does change on what's important in a relationship and this is something that i'm seeing with these the younger generation and doing readings for them is that they're so hooked onto this ideal that they have to be this this perfect person physically that they're forgetting that the physical fades and the emotional stays mm -hmm. and that emotional connection is what's important and so like for me i don't i wasn't never really super interested like physically that wasn't super important to me like i i you know we all have a type or whatever but for me i like the emotional side of it i like to be able to have super deep conversations and they call that sapiosexual where you're more attracted to the mind mm -hmm. and i think women forget that men also feel that way men do as they get older they want to be more connected on that level as well. And again, women are just right. stuck at what they look like physically, you know? Yeah, it's funny because I, I think about like, you know, famous rock stars uh, like Bill Wyman, the bass player from the Rolling Stones. I mean, I think the last wife that he married was probably 20 or 30 years younger than him. Yeah. And you start to go, man, I mean, is it that what it's really about is... Because, you know, I don't know, for me to sit in a room, not that I couldn't have a conversation with anybody of any age, but, you know, to be having yeah. conversations with a 20-year-old when you're 60, yeah. you know. What do you talk about? You, you know, don't. <laughs> yeah, it's, like a, it's just weird. It but. is weird. And I've come to the conclusion that this is the midlife crisis is what you're talking about. The Maybe, yeah. older man that needs the younger woman. But the midlife crisis, I truly believe, is an awakening. It's it's getting to the point where you're starting to to see things differently and your your perception is starting to change, which is like, oh my gosh, this doesn't like go with my reality almost now. And so some men freak out. I've noticed it with certain things with, with me, but a lot of it is also spiritually related. That's why I say that I almost feel like it's an awakening on some level because for a lot of people, you are opening a different part of your mind. Now, that might and not make some of it sense, could but... be 
their refusal to want to grow old, you know? Yeah. And so if you surround yourself with the young wife and then you have kids again, yeah, you still feel young. Maybe you are That's actually true. injecting some sort of youth into yourself by doing that. I don't know. But yeah, maybe you are. I, I, I think the one thing that's interesting about perception is perception changes. So perception is only good for the now. Yes. You know what I mean? You it's are like totally right. Your perception is going to change from moment to moment and from day to day and year to year and decade to decade, whatever. It, so it's only really good for the now. Yes. And when I say good, it can be for the bed, the better for of you, or it can also hurt you. Right. You know? So then you think about, okay, so I've had these kind of like perceptions my whole life. How do you change those perceptions, right? Especially like we can even go back to the subject that we were talking about of like girls with their weight. If you felt that way your entire life, but you're starting to realize maybe that that's not that important. How do you change your thought process? Mm -hmm. How do you change your perception of things? Right. That's something that I, it takes time. It's another one of those things that it's very easy to change the way that you look at things. And then when you get, I don't want to say angry, but angry, depressed or whatever the emotion may be, it's easy to slip back into that perception. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this is something I, I've learned with doing readings too, is that uh, it's hard to change people's perceptions, yeah. uh, but I try to kind of help so that I can help them, you know, that it's, different about my readings. I don't just tell people their future. I try and give them tips to help them right. with their perception. Yeah. So I wanted in this article that I was talking about who I did find what I wrote down. Um, oh, no, I didn't. I'm a liar. Okay. Anyways, go back to it. Ways that you can change your perception. I thought that this was very important because we can sit here and we can say, change your perception. But yeah. how? Yeah. How do you do that? Right? Mm-hmm. The first thing, honestly, I think, is that you have to be open to, to modifying your perception. Right. You can't be closed-minded. If you're closed-minded, how are you supposed to change that? Right. Right. Even if, you know, if you just take a moment to go, is everything really the way that I see it? Right. Okay, even if, I, if it's not reality, is everything really the way that I see it? I mean, the only other option really is reality, but right. if you take a moment to step out of that, and go, okay, I really have to question that. Mm -hmm. Is is this a mind thing? Right. Um, because if you don't even want to question it, you're going to get, you're not going to get anywhere. Right. With yourself. That's exactly right. And then that's the energy you put off and get back. Absolutely. And you know what? There's, there's two sides to this that I was kind of playing with on the, the being open. Um, one of the things that is funny as you get older that I'm sure most people notice is that we start to become our parents. Yeah. We start to say the same things that they said to us, even when, you know, we, they said, you're going to say this when you're older. And now <laughs> we're like, Ugh. like I open my mouth every day and my mother comes out. Right. And that that's great on some things. Like I wish that I would have listened and I wish that I would have had an open mind earlier in life to change my perceptions earlier. Yeah. But at, in that age, you know, when you're younger, you yeah. don't look at things the same way. This is that's why I feel like as you get older, this is easier almost, even though you're you're set into things. Mm -hmm. uh, as you grow older, you I think you start to humble yourself, at least for the most part, people do start to humble yourself on the fact that you don't know everything. Right. We think we know everything when we're younger. But you don't No, And that's a part of this, too, with your perception is that you have to get to the point where you know that you're not always right. And what you believe is not always correct. Yeah. But our we've been taught that, like, through our parents, too, not just that side of things, the smart side of things, but we've also been taught the wrong things. We've been taught religious beliefs, raised with religious beliefs that we've never examined for ourselves. That's why I think the religion episode is going to be important Yeah, because for a lot of us, all we've done is just looked at it from whatever's been passed down, not from our own perception. Right. And there's other things like, um, I keep seeing this meme that's floating around Facebook about tradition. Like you don't have to stick to, to the tradition. It's like peer pressure from dead people. And it, it's almost true because <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, is right. 
it's what they did back then. Why does that have to be your perception of things? Why does that? I mean, we want to stick to certain traditions, but if those things, if they don't make sense to you, why do you have to stick with them? Is kind of what I'm saying. Right. So you see both sides of um, of opening ourselves and and that kind of thing. What what our childhoods and what our parents have done. On right. one hand, they tried to help us when we were kids by making us more aware of what was going to happen when we right. got older. But they also taught us to not have our own perception and to listen to what other people say about certain things. Yeah, I think some tend to shove tradition down others' throats when maybe. There might be a new tradition somewhere there if it was nothing against traditions, but, right, you know, how do you get a new one if you're always sticking to the old right. one? That's exactly right. And like you were saying earlier, life is about new experiences. It yeah. is and making new traditions and trying new things. And, you know, you make your own traditions that make sense in your own family if you know, your family got up and went to church uh, for midnight mass. You don't have to ch pass on that if you don't want to. No. That's your perception right. of things because you see like, oh, that was my my parents thing. And you know what? I did that a lot after my mom died, too. I felt like I needed to stick to what um, right. she had taught and, and those things. And you start to realize they don't really even want that as as they get older. They want you to see things and it's not so you know? much i think honoring them in your actions that is part of it but i think it's in your heart and in your mind how yes. you hold them is what's most important as far as any tradition right here's something about perception i, I didn't even think about when i was putting this together about the other side a lot of what i deal with with people is their perception of of what their family members or loved ones may be like on the other side. And I get people all the time that ask me, uh, is my loved one still mad at me? Or like the person, the spirit will come in without the person wanting to bring them in, like coming to me for it. Somebody will come in and they'll be surprised that that person came through because of what their relationship was like here. when they were here. Right. But that's your perception when you, because you're a human still, you're here. That's your perception of the situation. Now, your loved one or whoever is on the other side and they see things completely differently when they get over there. Yeah. So, does your loved one harbor animosity? No, absolutely not. And right. I can say that for 100% of you that are listening right now, they don't harbor that because that's right. not something that's there. That's your perception. That's because of, their perception right. of this life is different from that vantage point as opposed to your perception in this life. Exactly. Once you get there and you see what's really going on and how things are really prearranged and, and you, how your life is pushed in a certain direction, things really start to make more sense. And so your perception there changes. Uh, and that... That comes to a lot of things. You know, I still have a hard time with that because there are people on the other side that come to me that I had problems with or whatever. And you kind of have to find like I have to find a way to yeah. accept that apology, even though my perception of things is different. Mm -hmm. Like they may see things as like, well, this happened for this reason and this was predetermined. You set this up. Right. But at the same time, you still have to accept what you've known your whole life. And that's not easy. Yeah, it's really not. <laughs> yeah. But again, coming back to your loved ones on the other side, if you had somebody like that, don't don't worry about that. Don't worry that there's no. there's animosity. And this could be a message from the other side too for somebody is don't worry about it. Right. Like let it go. It's all I think water they're under able the to perceive this life as much more of a gift than a lot of us do. Oh, absolutely. So they go, God, nothing is worth squabbling and you know Right over anymore right it's it's all amazing it is it is uh so then i guess what do you have to do you have to challenge your per your perspective really right you have to find ways to say okay well if this doesn't make sense to me right. and i want to see what really does make sense to me you have to challenge yourself yeah you know i think that in a spiritual awakening that's <clears throat> that's a lot of what happens i think we've both have had to to challenge the things that we were raised with and change our perception on some things. 
Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it is. It's very strange. It's um And I wasn't really raised in any sort of hardcore anything, you know, yeah. as far as religion. I sought it on my own, really. I you know, I wasn't either <clears throat> and and I'll tell a story actually. This makes sense now why this happened the other day. I didn't even think about this. We were sitting having a conversation about I think it was about smoking cuz you you used to be a smoker and your mom was a smoker and yep. and all that. So we were having a conversation about smoking and I started talking about my grandmother's sister who was a smoker and and all that. And my grandmother came in and I don't like have direct conversations with her a lot. I feel her sometimes, but this day she was very strong and she was very specific about what she wanted to talk about. And now I understand why. She, my grandparents were very wealthy. Okay, to give you a little history. My grandmother, uh, she remarried. She was divorced and remarried. And the man that she remarried, um, he was he owned a chain of nurseries. Mm -hmm. So very wealthy. Um, my grandmother, I didn't realize this, always felt guilty about the fact that she had the kind of money that she had. And she came from a family of 12, 12 brothers and sisters. Wow. And... None of her brothers and sisters lived the lifestyle that she did. None of them did. Wow. So I, I knew that she took care of this one sister this, that smoked. I knew she took care of her. And I knew, you know, you do things for your sister, your brothers, whoever. Mm -hmm. I, but why she, a part of why she did it was because she felt guilty for having what she had and for the other person not having what, you know, th that she had. That again, comes down to perception. And it's about like, I, I don't know, I kind of do the same thing where I feel like I want to give to others when I can, because it it makes me feel good. It makes me help. I don't necessarily feel guilty. But that was her message was that she wants to make sure that us and everybody else knows, don't feel guilty for the things that you have, the things that you worked hard for, the things that were given to you. Just use those gifts wisely. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? If you want to give to somebody, give to somebody, but right. don't feel guilty if you can't or you don't. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's really all about your perception. Mm -hmm. She worried so much about what other people thought about her for having that type of money right. that that was another thing that distorted her reality. Yeah, She didn't even really know how people thought about her. She was a very wonderful, giving woman, and I think that people looked at her that way right. as generous, not that she should feel bad and that she should do those things for people because she feels bad for having that kind of money. Right. You know, does that make they were sense? Pretty, from what you guys say, they were pretty giving. So They were very giving, and, and my grandfather, I really look at him as like an angel. He really was, and... And that was another thing in this conversation with her about perception is that he was my step grandfather. There is no blood at all. Right. But I never looked at him as anything other than my real grandfather because he never treated me any other way. Do you know what I mean? So, but on the outside, his daughters from his first marriage didn't look at our relationship that same way. No. So their perception of our reality was completely distorted. Right. Completely. This is where family issues are that you may not realize the perception that one person has and yeah. where communication and talking about it, um, it does help because I have addressed some of those things with with my family that's still around to say, hey, I am not my grandparents mistakes. I'm that was their stuff. Do you know what I mean? Your perception of what they have done in their lives has nothing to do with me. So don't perceive me the way you did them. Right. These are the types of things that I think if a lot of us could change our thought process on, we would just be generally happier. Oh, yeah. You know, look at things from a different angle. That was something that I wrote down on here, too, of, of ways to change your perception is don't assume that your perception is right. What others think of you or why they may be doing something, it may have absolutely nothing to do with you. Right. But we're very, very sensitive, a right. lot of us. And we don't understand how somebody else could be going through something and their perception is different of a situation than ours. Does that it make sense? It could be something you're doing, too. That's exactly you know, right. There, it, you have to take a look at it objectively and yeah. am I or am I not? But everybody's perception is different. So 
Yeah. I think it's always useful to humble yourself and go, okay, if this person's perception is this of me and they've expressed it or whatever, let me take a look at that. Right. You know, and think about what they said objectively. And if I agree with it, you know, are you that, you know, strong headed? You can't admit to some of it or maybe there you are completely off. But you have to be honest with yourself. And Mm -hmm. you know what? We all have our own life anyway. So if it doesn't matter, you doesn't matter to you. But if the person's important to you, maybe it is important enough to take a look at. Right. That's something that for me with the spiritual awakening has that's done for both of us really is that in it and growing and learning and and awakening to what's really out there. You have to examine yourself and you have to pull yourself apart. And it's very, very difficult to do because honestly, if there's anybody whose perception is the most whack Mm -hmm. about you, it's yourself. Yeah. Well, you are your own judge and jury. You will be here and you will be on the other side. That's there is exactly no God right. waiting to judge you and punish you. No. I it's, mean, there is a God, but there's not There's not there there's to no punish you. There's no line for, Mm-mm. you know, that there. It's, no. It's you do it all yourself. That's So exactly whatever right. you feel like you need to learn, you will experience life again to learn. I think we get into this pattern where... Like what you were saying about how somebody perceives you and if maybe they're correct on something, that a lot of times we want to fight it. Why do we want to fight it? Because we don't think it's true because we think that we're perfect. Like here's an example, and this isn't necessarily even like specifically about who I am as a person, but you for years were on me about not not drinking soda constantly you yeah. shouldn't drink so much soda 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 so bad for you it's bad for you it's why you can't lose weight it's bad for you constantly <laughs> we've been together our seven years and it was constant right mm-hmm. okay i was not ready to stop drinking soda right no. but i also looked at it and i'm sorry i have to say this my perception of it was you should mind your own business right yeah because I'm going to do what I want to do, and if drinking soda is what it is, then... Well, only because you would complain about your weight, so I right. would say, I'll tell you one thing, if you quit drinking that, right. you would notice a huge difference. Right. Shut up. That's human nature, <laughs> for us to go shut up and to not change that behavior, correct? Right. We, for whatever reason, don't want that other yeah. person to be correct about our situation. For me, with the spiritual awakening, I've had to change almost everything about myself. There's things that I've changed that I didn't change myself. I can guarantee you this. Like, this is coming from the other side. They're forcing me. Um, And we'll probably do an an episode about that, the spiritual awakening. But I did quit drinking soda. I had to do it when I was ready. I had to not listen to what other people said. I had to not look at the perception that had been put in my head about what what was going to happen to me if I stopped drinking soda. Because I was so worried about everything that I thought about, I'm going to go through withdrawals and it's, you know, I'm going to be tired and this and that and the other. Do you know that I just stopped drinking soda one day? I just stopped. But there was none in the house. I said, that's it. And that was four or five months ago. Yeah. And I haven't had a soda since. That's awesome. And my perception of it has completely changed. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, patting myself on the back here. What I'm trying to show is that. When your perception changes about something, when you say, you know what, maybe this person wasn't so wrong. Maybe he was right. You you also said to me about my skin, because I've fought acne my whole life, mm-hmm. that my skin was going to clear up. I think you said that, or maybe mm-hmm. that was Danielle. Somebody did. I did. Okay. That happened too. Why didn't I listen to you guys? Why did I think that I knew everything? Because that's our perception of mm-hmm. things. We don't want other people to be right about certain things like that. Right. I don't know why we do that. It's human nature. Yeah. But if you take a step back and you look at it, like if I would have, I don't know, I probably wouldn't have quit drinking soda earlier. But maybe if I would have stepped back and looked at it a little bit more objectively and said, okay, maybe I, I, maybe he's right. right. But there's also that side of us that we don't want other people to be right. Yeah, it's like our free will says, well, I'll decide when and where I'm in charge of this ship and where right. it's going. Yes. So once you change your perception on that aspect alone and realize, well, 
yeah, you do have free will and you can steer this ship wherever you want to go. Yeah. You might steer it right off the end of a pier. Yes. Or you can change your perception and realize that there's others um, more divine right. that are helping you steer your ship away from that pier. Right. Um, and it might heed some warning there to listen to those uh, messages because they don't always come from your own mind or a vision or a thought or a lyric in a song. It actually could be spoken through another human being. That happens a lot. And and I know that that's happening in this episode. I know that there's somebody there listening right now going, oh, my gosh, they're talking to directly to me. Yeah. Because that's what happens. That's how the universe is now speaking through us. You know, so take these things. You know, I, I feel like if we could all just maybe examine ourselves a little bit closer and, you know, we don't want to see those negatives. We don't want to see that maybe we were wrong about this or wrong about that. But the more that you start to accept that you're human and that you make mistakes and you change your perception of those mistakes and realize that a lot of those things are in your past and that yeah. doesn't make you who you are today, your perception can change of your future and yeah. your reality changes. Um, it, you know, <clears throat> it, it, coming back to the, the soda and all that, uh, have I lost weight? Yes. Has my skin cleared up? Yes. This whole spiritual awakening process has changed everything about me. It has changed how much I eat. I my perception of how to lose weight right. has completely changed. Yep. We stuff into society that you need to stick to certain calories per day. You need to not eat certain foods, this, that, and the other. Do you know that I have lost 40 pounds and all I have done is let the other side control the changes that I've made and they've helped me make the changes. I'm not saying let them make, you know, control you, right. but they have with each step changed pieces of me, right. helped me to realize the mistakes that I was making right. and the things that I was doing wrong, mm -hmm. how to change my perspective on those mm -hmm. and look at them differently. And that has helped me change the things that I haven't been happy with my weight for one. Yeah. You know, it, it is, it's always a roller coaster for me. I think a lot of people, we do that up and down, but I've gotten to the point where I see now what it is. It's that society has had this pumped into them. Like I said about calories and blah, blah, blah. Where really all it is, is sensible eating. You can eat whatever you want in small portions. Right. Moderation. And don't sit on the couch all day. Right. Get some exercise. Yeah. And your body will naturally regulate itself to where it's supposed to be, really. Well, it, like you wrote at the very beginning of the top of that page with the definitions that there's clearly two words, you know, perception and reality that have two different definitions. However, they greatly affect one in, one another. They almost can't exist without the other. It's weird. Yes, exactly. But if you change your perception, your reality is bound to change. Yes, that's and exactly that's, right. That's what's weird about it, you know? So you can be your, your biggest advocate or your biggest adversary, you know? Yeah. In these situations. And it really is <clears throat> your perception. And, and we can step outside of that and say besides your own perception of your own yeah. body, uh, stature, your own, uh, you know, where you sit in society – all those things. Yes. You can take it to other levels of like, where do I perceive myself mm -hmm. in the next 10 years? Right. And apply that perception to making that a yes. reality. And that, again, is taking a leap of faith just like you would have with quitting drinking soda. You yeah. said... Oh, I'm really scared about the withdrawals without, you know, the headaches from no caffeine uh -huh. and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, um, but you took a leap of faith uh -huh. and because you immediately at that point changed your perception, your reality changed. That's right. So not only were the withdrawals not as bad as maybe you perceived they would be. Right. But now your own physical perception of yourself was changing. So. Yep. <clears throat> Perception really is the key. Yes. And that's why amazing things happen in this world 
and have happened throughout history. Some you could say were miraculous. Some you could say were just a coincidence. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But they've happened because somebody's perception believed that they could happen. Yes, that's exactly right. We come back to Walt Disney a lot because, you know, I'm a huge Disney fan. Mm -hmm. And we had watched, and I'll highly recommend this, on if you have Disney+, Plus, there's a, a series called Imagineers. Mm -hmm. And they talk about Walt Disney and that's about great. how, you know, everybody thought he was crazy. He's going to build this amusement park that's based on a mouse. How is that going to happen? Walt's perception. I sat there and I was like, holy crap. He was so smart and so focused on what he perceived and not listening to what other people put into his mind that he made his dream happen. Mm -hmm. He did not listen to those naysayers. No. He did not let their perception ruin his reality. No, his biggest challenge, at least that I got from that, was is that trying to get everybody involved to see his vision as he perceives it. Yes. Um, that was a challenge. But yes. once he got the right people, you could see it just took off like wildfire. It just spread. Yes. And it's funny because for me watching that, like watching how he changed people like that, how people started going, oh, my gosh, he knew what he was doing all along. He never gave up. He never did. He's an inspiration. I want to do that for other mm -hmm. people. I want them to see that you can make your dreams come true. Mm -hmm. And you can, like for me, going from being, I'm not saying I'm above average, please don't take that this way. Going from being like everybody else and thinking that I have no control over my life whatsoever and mm -hmm. I'm just going with the day-to-day, -day, changing my perception to knowing that all of these small steps that I'm making to change myself to be a better person, mm -hmm. to you know enlighten myself, is going to help me change and enlighten others. Not that yeah. I want to change you guys, but I want to help you see right. that there is a great, big, happy world out there that if you're going to sit here and let your perception rule it, you're not going to see it. Right. You have to change what you right. perceive to be your reality into what could be. Yes. I mean, if the ancient Egyptians sat around and perceived the pyramids as absolutely impossible yeah. to construct then we wouldn't be here thousands of years later in awe of their existence. Right. Somebody believed it was possible. Right. And that goes for a lot of art and literature and music and <clears throat> things that you go, whoa. Right. I would have never seen or heard that if somebody didn't perceive that as being possible and worth doing, you know? Right. So... There's so much hidden in there as examples to us in life of you can't tell me these some of these people didn't think this is impossible. Oh, yeah. And yet it happened. We don't we mostly don't want to believe what we can't see. And what I find interesting and, and I could get into religion on this, but we're going to keep that for that. I'm going to I'm going to use Atlantis as a um, as my topic here. OK, mm -hmm. Um. I don't know a lot about the subject. It is something that we've been recently watching shows on. Again, Disney Plus has some great stuff. Uh, and I've read some, some yeah. stuff I've been reading. Is It's in there. But the thing is, is I think for a lot of people, they feel like this undersea world is not possible because how could there be an undersea world? Like, where did it go? What happened to it? Well, blah, the blah, world blah. doesn't exist undersea. It no, used no, no. to be above sea level right. and existed. That's not what I'm saying. Right, right. What I'm saying is there's a lot of people that don't believe it ever even existed because right. they're not seeing mm -hmm. the the pieces of it. Right. They don't. How did it exist if there's nothing left of it? Mm -hmm. uh, and the I'm, evidence is all there. The evidence is there. And it's all there. We were talking about this earlier, and I'd love to do an episode on Atlantis and, and Mayan civilizations and those types of things because – we want to perceive it as mm -hmm. it can't be real because I don't see it right. as to where, why can't it be real? Right. It could happen to us. Right. There could be a huge flood or volcano or whatever that right. takes us out. And then, you know, thousands of years from now, there's other people going, remember those Californians that they said? Remember Valley? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, are they real? Like, no, I think, what about this I think place Atlantis that's built a great, by a mouse? Yeah. A great 
example because um, a lot of people, you know, re- read about it in books, and I think some kids are brought up to think it's this this existing city underneath the water. That's right. not the case. No. Um, but it it was it was a civilization, and I'm not talking about a civilization, but this was uh, I think preceded. The Egyptians, but I'm not pos- positive, so don't quote me on that. But the technology was amazing. Mm-hmm. Like we're talking f- running water, yes, flushing toilets, mm-hmm. flying machines, yes. Okay, so they had power to things. Yeah, th- this was an advanced civilization. There's proof, and the need to figure it out and find it would prove that the writings are true, and this place did exist. We could just find the place. Yes. Of course, everybody's got to believe what was written, but Mm -hmm. there's a lot of literature that's been passed down for many, many centuries that people believe in. Right. It's just weird how our perception can get distorted of such a thing of, say, of like the people that don't believe that Atlantis existed because they don't see it yet. I'm sorry. I'm going to go here for a second religion we believe what we're taught even though there's no proof so these are the types of things that if you if you look at them and you kind of try and and humble yourself to them a little bit and challenge your perception not always going with what others have taught you Mm -hmm. what you were grown up to believe those types of things challenge these things for yourself and you may come back to the same conclusion your perception may still say this stay the same Or you may learn some things and you may change your perception, which really, honestly, for me, changing my perception on all of these things makes has made me a much happier person. Much. Yeah. And it gives me some sort of, I don't know if it's like restoring faith, but it puts some sort of deeper level of wonderment in my mind about this world and all the other worlds and, and the, what's really going on. Right. Exactly. <clears throat> that, you know, we aren't the center of anything. No, we're not. And we're definitely not alone, not even on this dimension, definitely not alone on the other side in that dimension. Right. But where there's a lot for us left to, for us to learn. That's a, another good point I didn't even think about is like, let's take, um, we all kind of look at aliens and UFOs a little bit differently. And there are some people that their perception is, oh, no, that's just made up. Those people that say that they see UFOs, they're just making it up. It's not real. That's their perception. Yeah. Okay. Then you have the people that um, see the what the aliens might be like as things like, what's that movie? The Independence Day. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like they want to come and, and kill us and whatever. Let me tell right. you what. If they wanted to come here and do that, they would have done it already. Oh, they yeah, and they, they wouldn't probably. They, they could have do the technology, it from where at. right? They didn't even have to come here. Exactly, it could be like a Death Star. <gasps> Maybe Pretty there's much. a real. Yeah, They'll, no, they're not like that. Nah. That's the thing is, they're not like that. They're That's protectors. our perception of it, exactly. Or you have the people. I mean, there's all kinds of ways you could look at this. Or like us, we believe that they're there. We believe that they have much more interference than maybe a lot of us believe in. They have, have much more to do with, as far as I'm concerned, are actually being here than we know it. I believe it. Yeah, we we tend to think that again with our perception that this right now is everything, and right. it's not. Do you realize how much? Let's see. I've been here 42 years, and how old is this Earth? <laughs> Billions of years old. Right. How much has happened in my 42 years on this planet? Then I have to look at how much could possibly have happened in those billions of years. Yeah. There's so much that we don't know that's been wiped out. Yep. But our perception of it is we're it. We're here now. If that stuff's not yeah, here, if there's alone, no proof. Right. Floating around, you know. <laughs> on this giant ball in space. No there's way. no other planets that have. Yeah. Yeah. Perception. Right. Yeah. One other thing I wanted to come back to real quick, because I wrote this down while we were doing this, which probably means it's a message for somebody. And it does fit with this. And this is great perception. What other people think of you is none of your business. (laughs) Yeah. Don't take what other people think of you as your perception of yourself. You know who you are. You know what you're capable of. Yeah. If I did that as far as like the psychic work, I wouldn't be doing this, Mm -mm. this work. I'm way past it now where I'm, I don't care what anybody thinks. That's right. my perception that's changed drastically. If 
if I can change my perception, right. you guys can too, and you can be happier too. Yes. It's just life. Some you of know? that does come with age. As, you yes. Know, in our genetics and our maturity, we tend to not look at it like school anymore. And, oh, my God, my, what I'm wearing, do I look <laughs> yeah. okay? Uh, that does change. You know, if there is anybody that's younger listening to this, you know, just know that it's all perception. Yes. And that a lot of those things that you feel like you, you we we deal with our daughter on this. Yes. You know, that, Constantly. And my parents did with me some level is yeah. just reassuring them. I'm not trying to say your problems don't mean anything. I'm just trying to say this in the big scheme of things is very insignificant. That's exactly right. You don't realize that till you get older. It does come with age. And again, that's our parents telling us you're going to, you're going to see this when you get older and and us repeating that down. Mm -hmm. But the kids don't understand why we're saying that, you know, and they're not going to change their perception at that age. But like you said, if there's any, you know, 20, 30 year olds, don't stress about these things you're stressing about now because your perception is going to change and you're going to start to see things differently yeah. when you get to, you know. For sure. And, Even from yeah. 20 to 30 and 30 to 40, oh. it's like been a a progression. Yes. Where you definitely, at least for me, I got way more comfortable with me. Me too. And where I was headed and <clears throat> my beliefs and even my perception on a general scale you know right but what i might even be way different by the time i'm 60 right that's exactly right we could be totally different it it changes your your perception like you said at the beginning it is it's constantly changing but i think that if we can learn as a society to perceive ourselves not the way we think other people perceive us and perceive situations the way we want to perceive them Life would change. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So. Well, that was a cool one. That was good. All right. Yeah. Episode 34. <laughs> In the bag. In the game. Yeah. Folks. Exactly. Cool. Well, um, we hope you guys got something out of it. Yeah, we it's, do. It's a kind of a wormhole sort yeah. of topic because you go in one and come out the other and yeah. vice versa, but it's important. It is. It, it really is important. And I think this is a big part of uh, the human race's homework in general yes is on a global level is we've got to change our perception right we need to stop sending spaceships out into space with flags from different <laughs> countries on right. them okay let's send something that's from earth. earth yeah let's start taking things as a planetary as a unit as a mm-hmm. one as a whole right because we are one yes yeah all right yeah. Well, before we say goodbye, do you like to share your information? Anything you got happening? Yes. Let's see. Uh, you can find everything that you need to know about me on my website at Samantha Jones Psychic Medium dot com. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have any events right now. I don't think, but cool. Yeah, I'm on Shine Psychics. If you want to talk to me there, or you can you know message me directly. However, you would like to get a reading. I love to help. Beautiful. Yeah. And if you like art, D Jones Art Collection dot com. Um, you can find me on the web there and also Facebook and Instagram. I just finished Tupac Shakur today. Yes. I posted it on my personal. I haven't put it on my art page yet or Instagram, but it'll be up there. And by January, I should have the store open and all these newer pieces that I haven't put on my website. I think there's about five or six that I've put it on Facebook and Instagram that I haven't put on the website. Yeah. And those will be open and the store will be open and have some prints available. I'm so, so excited. I am too. Yeah. So that's for the art and music, um, gypsybrown.com on the web and Instagram, Gypsy Brown Music. Um, you can find us on Facebook too. We got uh, a wonderful guy coming in tonight to try out, uh, Rich, um, excited, uh, trying on the bass. And so we've heard some stuff coming back to us that he's sent us samples and we're Excited. Yay. I'm excited to hear it. One more. Yeah. Feels like a little ah nudge forward. Yeah. That's the thing with life, too. Again, with perception is you got to look at those moving forwards and enjoy them. Yep. Yep. For sure. Yeah. Well, we appreciate everybody tuning in. That we do. With another episode with us. And we hope you guys have a great week. And until next week. Peace and love.